Greetings, this is Chester with The Samplist, and our sonic journey today is Triumph Audio's Ghost Eucalyn. Before we dive in, I'd like to make it crystal clear that the copy of this library we're reviewing was graciously provided to us by the developer. However, let me assure you that our commitment to delivering honest and transparent reviews remains unwavering. Our goal is to arm you with all the information you need to decide if this library deserves a spot in your musical toolkit. Imagine taking a step back in time to explore an early 20th century antique stringed instrument, the ukulele, and bringing it into the modern age with a twist. This library captures the raw, brash, and slightly out of tune characteristics of the original instrument, but elevates it to something that's both familiar and yet entirely unique. It's like a time machine and a spaceship rolled into one, taking you on a journey through cinematic history and into uncharted territories. So what makes this library so special? Well, it's packed with seven different categories of material that range from tonal to atonal, raw to processed, and beauty to horror. Whether you're scoring a horror film, creating tension in a drama cue, or designing ambient soundscapes, this library has you covered. And let's talk about the engine powering this beast, the photosynthesis engine by Jeremiah Pena within Triumph Audio's custom interface. This isn't just a sample player, it becomes a very creative tool. Let's talk numbers. Normally, this library would set you back $149, but not today. Triumph Audio is offering it at a special introductory price of just $75. Yes, that's right. Half off. But this is for a limited time, so you want to act fast. Here's some quick specifications that we feel are good to know. Total patch count, 163 patches. The library size is 5.8 gigabytes of your precious hard drive real estate, and you'll need the full retail version of Contact 5.8.1 or higher, so sorry contact player users of that free version, this library isn't compatible with that. Let's now explore the presets this library has to offer. All right, now let's look at the presets here for Ghost Euclid. As we can see, when we look into the folder, we have A through G, all the presets that we can select. And this is how they have organized their presets to be in these folders. What I will say about Ghost Euclid is a lot of it is because it's a bowed or plucked instrument, you're gonna get a lot of like drone patches or, or a lot of movement over time patches that are going to be similar in nature. But when you go to write your music, uh, you'll be able to apply them differently and uniquely. And, and that's where you're gonna get your mileage over time. And then sprinkled in a lot of those patches are going to be every now and then you're going to get like a little menu of fun little articulation like uh, ornaments or, or something short uh, where you can apply those as well. What I would suggest doing is as you start learning this library and how it works, start creating your favorites and then a lot of the short uh, patches, you're going to probably want to start favoring some of those rather than diving into this folder every time and trying to find them. I would almost have suggested to the developer to have a short folder here at some point. Polished and pitched uh, is the first folder. We start with bowed and scrapes. What's really fun about Triumph Audio as a company is they will use the names to kind of tell you what you're, what you're getting when you load up a patch. And so the tonal here just simply means that there's a menu of uh, bowed and scraped sounds. And then as you play them. There's a tonal application to them. So whichever one you end up wanting to go with, you will have a couple options to work with the pitch of those. Next up we have, uh, you'll see mod effects a lot in the names. We can see them sprinkled kind of throughout and that just means the mod wheel will apply the effects as you go up, you're affecting the dry wet of that effect that is mapped to the mod wheel. And uh, that's a lot of fun. You can do a lot with that. So the team over there at Triumph Audio has applied some mod effects to those patches. 
if they don't have the mod effects or if there wasn't a mod effects applied, usually it'll just default to the cutoff. And then let's just grab one here. Full velocity, this might be. You have the cutoff you control with the mod wheel. Otherwise. All right, so this one has VEL, which means velocity, so velocity. is to be taken into account uh, where you have aggressive velocity, full velocity, medium velocity, uh, just kind of demonstrates through plucked uh, what they've recorded and set up in this patch. Effects and perk. This is one I would save. There's not really another patch like this in the library. In fact, this might be my favorite of all of them just because of that reason. I found myself in the, in the composition we're about to go to, I was struggling to find a lot of these. The application of those are endless. It's a unique sound that you can layer in or uh, start with and kind of create some fun with. So it's almost like as if uh, that's kind of like similar to what, how you get like prepared piano in nature. It's a lot of cool, fun applications here, but Coast Euclid is giving us that sound. Quirky, if I see that, I'm going to be intrigued. Yeah, that's fun. All right, tonal loops menu. When you see menu in the names, that's typically, not always, but typically uh, they're just saying like there's a menu of options here in the keys as you play them. So you're not going up and down with one sound over octaves sprinkled throughout the keys are different samples. And performances, and this is loops. So we have a loops menu to dive through. And then over here, this other batch of keys here, this is the tonal center of your loops, like the root note. So I'm at a low D here, or I could be at a higher D. Or a C. Or if my key's an E. We'll use E. So that's pretty hip. And then at the top, you're going to see a bunch of red keys as key switches. And that's just how the photosynthesis UI kind of works here. We have the effects engine, and now you'll notice all these keys assigned to each effect. So if I press any of these, uh, it will turn it on and engage it, which allows me to control uh, distortion application or lo-fi uh, throughout my arrangement uh, if I want to use these keys, and that's pretty nice. Send effects has it too. So if I want delay or reverb at the end of a phrase, I can apply these key switches there, and then we'll have a nice little delay tail or reverb tail as part of our piece. At this point, I mean, why not go through some of this photosynthesis UI? It's usually the same uh, in any library that will leverage it. Uh, you have three layers here. Typically, you're just going to see the one layer engaged, but if you want to use two and three, uh, you got to dive in and get that set up. You'll have a gain, pan, and tuning for your layer, uh, which is the sound. So applying one of the loops right now and we're seeing this happening so I can turn that up I can turn it down and put it back where it was roughly I can pan it left right here or keep it center and then tuning I I will, a lot of the times will map this I'll MIDI map this and then have it in my DAW where I can use it but uh, with Triumph Audio, you get two options. You can either use this tune, which I still do either way, but you can also use this keyboard uh, to find your that uh, root note that you want to play. So if I'm in D minor and I want the low D rather than the high one, I can select it here and I will get that as my pitch for my loop, whichever loop I'm playing. It's global, so 
that works. Alternatively, I can use this tune and I can go down, say, two octaves. Now it bypasses this. You, you can't use these together. It's going to be one or the other, uh, which is why I don't always use this tune. So if this is available and you need, you want to be in D, use it. Else you can use this and you can dial in uh, however you want. It's mostly whichever is comfortable to you, which one you want to use, or you can even use the one up here in contact, however you want to assign that and get that out. But I'm usually using one or the other because uh, you have no choice. You're either going to use one or the other. All right, then we have these envelopes, uh, which are pretty handy. Uh, you have a filter envelope, all with the ADSR, and then you have your amount that you can add to amount, or you have the velocity you can kind of set. I like this pitch envelope a lot, especially with a horror library like this, because I can kind of set up an envelope uh, and just make it kind of wonky, even sure what this envelope will kind of sound like. But then I'll put it in amount in, and as you can see, this amount is tied to semitones. So we can have like 1.5 semitones. And that's kind of a fast envelope, but uh, you can... And you can apply some fun pitch sounds to this. That was just a little dramatic. I would probably even go 75 or just something like that. And you make it just sound kind of unsettling uh, with, with pitch. Alternatively, favorite way of doing it is, and they have it, I go in this rhythm engine and we have LFOs that we can adjust. We also have step sequencers we can use. So we have two options here. I can either set some sequencers for this filter or I can set it with an LFO or I can go to these the sources area now I have three LFOs assigned to panning gain or amplitude and then pitch and so I can use this one and add some amount to it which impacts semitones and then I can have a rate uh, we like that and then I can sync it if I want and then I got some presets if I want to add those and then I can adjust and set up a waveform alternatively that's a lot of fun. So I could uh, use this as my pitch, make it weird and unsettling and, and just kind of add that and add it subtly just so that it it's not quite doing what we want it to, but making it that okay because we want to make a really uh, unsettling project for our music. Sorry, I didn't mean to move my UI here. Now look at stereo. So this is the output engine or the master output uh, where everything's kind of summed together. And so we can add a stereo spread to this. We can add a transient shaper. We can add EQ and we can add compression right at the end there that goes out to the DAW. A lot of options here with photosynthesis engine. It's a pretty awesome UI. All right, moving forward to the new folder. Let's talk about atonal and horror. Uh, these are not going to be as tonal on the keyboard. A nice little menu of options here for us. Let's start with atonal whispers. And this is where I would like applying that tuning, just bring it down more. Secondly, what I would like to do in my DAW is add a reverb. Now I've made my own drone, which is pretty fun. A little bit of movement. And I can use the mod wheel a little bit. Cut off. That's fun. And it's very simple. I can even add some of that pitch envelope, like I said, or that LFO. And I have uh, my own patch there that I'm up and running with. I love the simplicity of using a library like this. All right, let's look at feedback drone swells. I'm going to turn my reverb back down. Look at this horror one menu.
A lot of boat options there. Let's look at a few plucked options. And again, this one I'd probably save in my favorites. This would be another fun one to tune down. Just kind of changes it when you when you tune it down so aggressively. And almost as if it's its own menu now. And we'll do slow creep scrapes. This is a pretty fun one. A lot of layers in that. With just one instrument. So that's really cool. You'll notice that we have this TMP folder that's time machine processing. That's a contact related thing. So we have these uh, these DFD like samples here that we're using and then time machine processing is just another way that contact will process the samples as you play them. Uh, it's mostly in respect to BPM and pitch, but it's kind of whichever you prefer. They both do different things, but the patch and the samples and the sound source samples are the same. The UI is the same. It's just how your DAW and how contact, mainly contact is processing the, the patch. So you'll use whichever one you need for the work you're doing. All right, moving on, let's do drones. We got this chatty Cathy with the mod wheel. These drones are really cool. They have a lot of movement to them, as you'll hear. You can get a nice endless drone kind of going and work your piece around it. That's a big strength of this library are these drones. Let's do a couple more. We'll do this drone groan. You can play that mod wheel to it. They have effects on most all of them. So you won't be worried about using the cut filter too much. It'll be having its own processed effects. Or you can map them if you want, but. Similarly, similarly with these, you can pitch them down. Kind of takes you more further in the dungeon. And I don't wonder if we try the opposite just here, just. Kind of gives us something else. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with tune. It's a pretty powerful option. Sol Ponticello. So for those that don't know what sol pont means, it's short for sol ponticello. It's a term in music that's used. It's when a stringed instrument that's bowed, uh, it's bowed it real close to the bridge. And so that's just going to give a different type of tone or, or sound to the instrument. So it's like articulation or just like the way the performer's playing notes. And so they're playing it where they're bowing it very close to the bridge. And so without playing like too much pressure and and making it like fast enough so that the string doesn't vibrate too much. So it makes it like really cold and kind of, as you're going to hear here in this, this is examples, kind of creepy. And then I don't know if I mentioned this, but there you'll see TRP in a lot of the patches. I gravitate towards these TRPs when it comes to Triumph Audio. Uh, it's a Triumph Audio thing. That means that they've kind of decided how to process the patch. So they've kind of set a little bit more up here. And uh, it just has a... 
when you're using the mod wheel or, or when you're working with the patch, you're going to have some more excitement in the way it's processed. I just like it. I don't know. It might be a personal thing, but uh, I know it's intentional because they, they've labeled as such, but these TRPs are really awesome patches. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at Swarm now. Swarm has a very much a stereo image on some of these. Usually Swarm would be multiple, so there's multiple samples kind of going on at once as you hit one key. So we're getting several performances and layers on top of each other, which can be desired. A lot of times you might want to Swarm. I'm guessing we should be able to see what maybe not I thought we might get to see what the mod wheel is controlling but that might be what the TRP means is they've processed it so it's controlling something in the in the back end here I guess without reading a user manual in some time, it's two sample sources. So TRP is probably processed in their own studio and they recorded it as audio. And so in the back, you're hearing a dry sample. And then as you use your mod wheel, you're getting into their processed sample. Or you're layering those in. That's cool. All right, let's go to process patches. This is a really fun folder. You'll find a lot of goodies here, so you can't go wrong with what you're grabbing. Bell tower, and I'll show you what I mean. dark depths. When you get a really fun sound like that with a lot kind of going on, that's where I like to detune those. Or even tune them up sometimes, but that's fun. That's a fun little idea. Let's see, there was Sick Cow. I don't think I heard that one. Let's hear that one. <laughs> I grew up on a farm. I just had a flashback to those times. That's funny. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's that's a good name for that patch. If you need a, a sick cow in your next song, make sure you make a mental note of where to find one. Wharf pad. Let's do one more, then we'll go to the last. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, I like that one very much. That that might be one of my more favorite patches I've heard. That's a good one. All right, so the final folder here, the team at Triumph Audio, they have these process patches that they've done, and they use a lot of the time they'll use the rhythm engine here, or they'll just have a fun kind of patch that they set up. So these are a lot of these are pulses. So they'll... And they use a lot of processing to get a desired result. A lot of these might be a lot, bit louder too. So apologies if you were turned up all the way and this is too loud for you. So you'll get a lot of pulses from Austin here. Kevin, I used quite a few of his in, in the piece that I'll be showing here in a moment. So I'm not going to go through too many of these, but let's do one or two. this pulse. and Mega Terror. Awesome. So that's the preset walkthrough, and next let's go into the composition we made with this library.
All right. That was Ethereal Haunting in D minor. And uh, we're about 70 BPM here. So nice low lull type track. Kind of thought of it as maybe like some sort of horror cue or horror trailer track. Let's look here. So a huge chunk of this is Triumph Audio's Ghost Euclid Library. So the, the core idea here. And so I'm going to solo that and I'm going to take out this uh, this idea and show you just kind of a little bit of what we have. So and so on and so forth. So it's very droney, very much drenched in reverb it's it's giving it a real dark and uh dungeony type sound that i can build around so that and then over time here uh at the end we're just building momentum i'm just adding more stuff i'm trying to get to the end and and hit it on a on a beat the intro i wanted to kind of start with a not just like a, a drone that is crescendoing in. I wanted to hit uh, this piece right away with a kind of like a signature like sound. That's a strength that I feel Ghost Euclid has. There are so many options to get a nice short uh, hit that just sounds really uh, horrific. So I, this is the one I ended up using. It's from this plucked gliss menu. And what I really like about it is not only does it hit and, and give you all this detail and texture, but it actually that release and that tail of the sound keeps me around keeps my ear around that focus and i really enjoy that about a library so no exception to this one the drones are plenty i ended up using this drone this is what started my whole track actually and everything else built around it Every drone and every type of sound that comes from this library has movement in a lot of uh, really unique and interesting ways. So if you're ever in need of, of some sort of drone to, to carry a track, this library is going to be an excellent option. And you can't have too many of those libraries for sure, especially ones that are characteristic like this. It's always good to come back to these libraries every now and then and say, oh yeah, this gives me a texture that, that just sounds a little different, a little unique, and, and something I could really use right now, uh, versus all those synth-based drone libraries. Uh, this one has kind of like an organic edge to it, and when you drench it with reverb, it can take you somewhere. Uh, this, in, this middle break part, uh, this is a lot of Ghost Euclid as well. sound uh, but that break part that's definitely that's definitely all ghost euclid here and uh, that just sounded really good and and i kind of wanted that to kind of take take that whole section and then uh, i have some whoosh and and risers kind of bring this back into the idea so that was mostly the library i wanted to keep it kind of short sweet simple and then just kind of letting the arrangement kind of take us there with using this library as a drone concept and then building on that, giving it energy and movement and bringing us home at the end here. 
it's time to wrap up our journey with some final reflections. If you're a composer like me, you know the struggle of finding that unique sound, that signature element that sets your work apart from the rest. Ghost Euclid is not just another instrument library, it's a palette of sonic possibilities that can elevate your compositions to new heights. Whether you're working on a horror film that needs that eerie, unsettling atmosphere, or a drama that requires tension and emotion, this library has something for you. It's like having a secret weapon in your composer's toolkit. So is the Ghost Euclid worth it? In my professional opinion, absolutely. It's a unique, versatile, and high quality addition to any composer's toolkit. If you're looking to push the boundaries of what's possible in your compositions, this is a must have. This is Chester signing off from the sample list, and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you're hungry for more insightful reviews, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned with all things The Sample List. Until next time, keep pushing those creative boundaries and happy composing. Cheers. <laughs>